Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. So, as the name suggests, I am Andrea. I talk about the NDIS and how to get your best out of it, and also talk about living life as a adult with chronic illness and disabilities in Australia. So today I want to jump into about getting the best out of your plan as well. So guys, the first thing with getting the best out of your plan, and a few of you guys would be old hats at this guys, and drop your comments below if I don't cover anything, is in your, because it can be quite an arduous time applying for NDIS, knowing whether you qualify or don't qualify as well. So this is the first thing, is to know whether you qualify or don't. So on the NDIS website itself, there's three categories. There's category A, which is automatic acceptance. There's category B, which is minimal evidence required. And then there's category C, which requires a lot of evidence and paperwork to receive a package. And so when you get your first plan, you need to be very clear about your goals in that very first plan as well. They have to also come back to that tenet of reasonable and necessary for improving your life. I've talked about housing, community participation, community access, the difference between a day centre and a day service, um, things like that. So this would have to be my key takeaway if you take nothing else from the video is know what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it if you need to be linked into other services know what you will and won't tolerate from them so from that first phone call that you ring so how long does it take them to ring you back will they follow up on any concerns will they put things in writing Will they explain the jargon to you or do they expect you to pick it up as you go along? So that is the first one. Know what you will and won't tolerate from service providers and support workers. With support workers, I've done the whole series on how to work with the support worker, how to pick the right one for you as well. So you can go and check that one out. It is in the playlist. NDIS playlist. Then the second one is know what's available in your area as well or if you're going to be starting from scratch do you have someone who is willing to be trained up as a support worker as well. Know what else is out there if you don't qualify for the NDIS because sometimes it can take up to 18 months to gather all the paperwork, to have a assessment done and to go in for your planning meeting as well. So know that your goals, what your goals are as well and know what's available in your area. Know if you're prepared to move. So if you need accessible housing, how far are you able to move? If you own your own home, is there some companies that you can work with to modify? Now this one is a whole other kettle of fish, so you have to have another home assessment as well for modifications as well, because there are some horrific cases out there of home modifications being denied, that the NDIS would rather you move into a purpose-built house than to have your own home modified. So that one is a no a case-by-case -case basis. This then leads me on to my next point, is that everything is on a case-by-case -case basis as well, and know that providers will want to take a piece of the pie. So this is one thing I've learnt, is working with a plan manager that and the support coordinator is knowing what's reasonable as a rate for service providers as well and know what you get for that. 
know how much admin fees that they're taking out of it. And if they're taking an admin fee out, well, if they won't return phone calls, if they won't communicate clearly with you, remember that it is your choice and control to change providers. It is also area dependent and dependent on what you have available to you in your area as well. Then know whether you want to go self-managed, plan-managed, agency-managed as well. And one thing with service providers, do they have one person who will build a relationship with you for a point of contact? Or will you get a different person every time and have to explain your needs over and over and over again uh, as well? Do you prefer to go private with a sole trader? Do you prefer to go with an agency? And know what your health related supports and needs are and know how they will be managed. Will they be managed by the health system? Will they be managed by the NDIS? Will they be managed by both? So also take your health conditions into consideration when you're applying for your first plan or a plan review. The worst thing that they can say is no. And also know who your informal supports are and what they do for you because the NDIS isn't a replacement for those informal supports they're supposed to complement. Okay guys, so it's a really interesting one. Um, Realise that if a provider doesn't accurately address your concerns that you're quite within your rights to move. However, have a look at your service agreements, have a look at your contracts, see if there's a cancellation fee if you're going to move. Because I know in some smaller towns there's only one or two providers or you need to train someone up as a caregiver as well. So also have a look at your travel allowance. So know how far you've got to travel to attend doctor's appointments and stuff like that because then you can have apply for your assistive technology so you can do it over Zoom, so you can do it over the internet. Also know what the NDIS will fund in your area versus what is an everyday living expense. So know what your budget is for going to specialists as well. I do know that there are some advocacy agencies that I've talked about in my NDIS journey that will do advocacy for you until you get your package as well. But just check on how capa much capacity they do or don't have as well. But also consider joining a disability advocacy group. You won't, there'll be a very diverse range of opinions in there, but it's very worth getting connected into them. Even if it's just on their mailing list, not seeing their physical meetings. But that also then gives you tips, hints and tricks and connections into the community that aren't a support worker, that aren't family and friends. They're people who have had similar issues and similar stories to you. So they would also be able to help as well. And I will do a difference between information sharing and gossip as well because NDIS does not like people sharing what they got funded because what's appropriate for you might be not be appropriate for another person. But knowing that one person got it funded, knowing the circumstances around it, then also gives you power, puts the power back in your hands as well, guys. So guys, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.